So I bought another Volkswagen. And I say that because I used to own a 98 Golf 1.9 diesel wagon back in 2012 as a daily. It was not a pretty car, but I wanted to try and save some fuel and, you know, diesel was cheap and yes, it did get pretty good mileage, but nope, I just wound up wasting my money on that car as well. It broke down on me on more occasions than I kept track of and also left me completely stranded three times in the need of a tow truck. One time the drive shaft snapped right off, another time the starter suddenly stopped working, and the last time something something in the gearbox just left the building and that was the last thing that ever happened before I got rid of it. Non running of course. And after that I never looked at buying a Volkswagen ever again. Until about a couple of weeks ago when this manual 2008 Caddy 1.9 diesel was up for grabs for about 700 bucks in a nearby city and I thought it was just too good of a deal to miss. Meanwhile, my daily Volvo 945 was being a bit problematic, so I decided to make the deal. The car was bought with a few issues, one of them being a turbo underboost code that luckily turned out to be just a leaking EGR cooler, not the turbocharger like I thought it was at first. It also has a few cosmetic damages like rust and some bad touch-up paint jobs, some bad wiring work that needs fixing, and just a big detailing job would also be nice. So the plan for the car is to fix it up and sell it and try to make some kind of profit off it, but if I don't get what I want for it, it may just become my work van for my small business that I run outside my regular work at Volvo. But I guess we'll see what happens. So anyway, that's the plan. And uh, we'll see how much I stick to it, but that's the plan so far. Anyway, back to the clip. All right, guys, I'm just gonna put this clip in here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit crazy. Uh, this is about a month later from the making of that other clip you saw. It's probably two months by now. We had a daughter. Me and my wife, we had our second child and it's been great. And I decided to take some time off YouTube, social media, everything, and just spend time with my children. And it has been great. It's been really, really nice, but it's time to get back on the old YouTube horse, if you will. Um, that caddy, by the way, I sold that. I sold that, got a great profit on it. Uh, I just basically took it as is in the video. Well, I did change that EGR cooler, of course, and did a service on it. Uh, which you will see in this clip later on. Uh, but I did make a decent profit off it. And then the Volvo 945 broke, so I have been working on that, you know, some slight modifications. Uh, but there will, that's another story, we'll get to that. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we're back. All right, Ariet, no, wait, carry on with the clip. Ariet, hi. All right, so, I have a lot of things to do with the caddy, but I, I gotta start somewhere and I thought I would start with a service on it. And that brings me to today's sponsor. And the sponsor is oljemagasinet.se. And I actually really like these guys. I have no problem promoting these guys. I have been buying oils from them for like five or six years. I've even got one over here, let me show you. All right, so this is one, this is a 0W30. This is for the white V70, you know, our, our daily or my wife's car, basically. Uh, so I knew that car would be around for a few years, so I decided to buy oil in bulk. This is a really great idea if you, if you think you're gonna keep a car for a while because it really gets the price down. Get yourself one of these, it's about $10 a liter. I mean, for Castrol, it's pretty good price. And this one is bought at Olio Magasinets. Anyway, they're always quick on delivery. They seem to have most things in stock. Uh, I haven't had anything go wrong, have never had to send anything back and get the correct part. Uh, hopefully we won't have to do that in this one because I was a little bit, I'm a little bit concerned with the, uh, the fuel filter on this one because we had three choices on this car and it was kind of diffuse which one it was, but hopefully we got the right one. Anyway, let's unbox this box and see what's inside. Oh, look at this. We have some, Okay, I'm just gonna put the box to the side. Okay, so we have some Eurolube uh, gloves. Let's see if this one, these are the right size. What do we have here? Size 10, yeah, so that's great. Should be perfect. Uh, you know, you go, I don't wear gloves too often. So that's actually really nice, but this is not included in all the packages. I don't think so anyway. That would be very nice, but if you care about your hands, I would recommend that you check these out. All right, next thing we have, what is this? I'm thinking it's the fuel filter. Yes, it is a fuel filter. Hopefully that's the right one. What do we have here? Here we have 
Die cleverne Einschneidung. What do you call it? Washer fluid with apple sauce in it. Yeah, you kind of want to drink that. That smells pretty good. All right, so we have apple flavored, uh, apple scented washer fluid. That's what it is. Uh, we got some oil, 530, which is what we want. Castrol edge. I think it's a total of four point, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 4.6 liters. That's probably not right, but it's uh, more than four liters anyway. So that's why we have this combo right here. All right, let's see what do we have here. Here, that looks like a like an air filter, and it is an air filter. Uh, we got a Mala. Uh, this is a oil filter. Hopefully this is right too, but I, th I don't think we had a lot of choice. I think this was, I think it was just a choice between two different brands. And this one is the little bit more pricey brand, I think. So that's good. I like the Mala filters, never had any issues. We have an oil plug. Don't skip on that because it will most likely start to leak and it's such a cheap little thing. Just go ahead and change it. And last but not least, we have the Deckerman, <laughs> Decker, Denkerman. Not Deckerman, it's Denkerman. There we go. This is the uh, cabin filter and it is supposed to be a special model and it's like blue or something, but I'm colorblind, so it might be a different color. It's white on this side though, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's what's special about it. It's blue on this side and white on that one. Nope, this is uh, silver ion technology. I have no idea what silver ion technology is, but it is probably pretty good. Let's talk more about it when we exchange this one, shall we? So then I can, you know, not look that up on YouTube, what that is. I always like to do that. I always take the oil filter off first because there's a little plug. Let's see if I can show it to you. There's an O-ring right here and when you pull this out, like when you undo the filter, like I just did and just leave it there, then the oil is gonna go past here and run down into the oil pan. And the filter will get relatively, relatively dry. I mean, if you leave it there for like 30 minutes, like while you wait for the oil to, to run out, this one's gonna be pretty much dry. So let's put it back and I'll prove it to you. All right, so now is the time I would tell you to remove this pan right here, but this has already been removed because I've already done some fault tracing on this car. I had a look underneath and the EGR cooler is broken. Anyway, this thing is held in place by about a million screws in this case. And uh, we have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 screws at least. So yeah, there's a lot of screw to get this thing off, but this will be located underneath. Take this off and you'll get to the oil plug. All right, so let's uh, dive under here. I don't usually wear gloves when I'm taking off the uh, oil plug here, but uh, this is a number 19. So, and since we're looking at this from the other side, it'll be like tightening a bolt from this side. Okay, so you wanna knock it like that, not the other way. Very common mistake. All right, uh, let's see if I can if I can do this without getting my glove all oily. In the best of worlds, you would want the oil to be hot, but this is a YouTube situation and I can't keep the oil hot. So it takes a long time to rig everything up. But generally, you wanna be draining the oil after the engine's warmed up. All right, so then we just let this drain in peace. Let's uh, go and check something else out while we're waiting. All right, so the air filter. Um, not much to mention here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and undo all these screws. These are Phillip head screws. And then we're just gonna lift it up. Oh, look at that. That is a good looking filter. That is, uh, yeah, we don't really need to change that, to be honest. That looks really good. It's a Mala filter. LX1482, and this one is from 2018. At least it's made in 2018. It might not have been fitted in 2018, but actually we could actually look at the service history and find out when this was changed. But since we got new filters, we're just gonna go ahead and fix this. And we're just gonna go ahead, and, you know, get this cleaned out here. It's a lot of sand and stuff. 
I like to get a brush, just come in here and knock all of that dirt loose. It kind of gets stuck in there. Just want to get all of this loosened up. There we go. We just get a vacuum and suck it out. So let's put this thing back. All right, new color. Probably pink, I would say, but I am very colorblind. And we can also see that something's been going down right here. Someone's swapped out some of these cables. Must have had an issue with that. Got the wrong color on this one though. Black on a positive. Anyway, good to know. So let's uh, revisit this guy. All right, so I told you guys that this would have drained off by now. So uh, let's pick it up. Well, it's pretty dry. It's not, it's not completely dry. That's it. Okay, it kind of drips a little bit. A little bit of drippage, but it's fine. I mean, it's, you can handle it now. It's not oil everywhere. So just pull this off like so. You chuck this away and you also want to get this gasket right here and you can get that pretty easily by just squeezing and turning it around that way you can catch it ah oh, crap here we go all right just throw that away it's always good to compare the two you get the new one watch out so you don't drop the gasket and then you just kind of quickly compare them in this case, the old one is a Mala, so we can just look at it, and it's an OX188, and the new one is an OX188, so that way we know it's gonna fit. And of course, if they are not the same brand, you just kind of compare them visually and see, you know, is it obviously wrong or obviously not right. All right, get the new O-ring and put it on the filter cap or housing cover or whatever you want to call this thing. All right, and you want to put some oil on this ring, on this O-ring right here. And if you don't have an oil can with the right oil in it, you can just get the cap of an oil can and put some oil in there and then lube it up. And then you take the filter and you stick it on here until it clicks. And you can get some of that oil again. Let's put a little bit on that O-ring as well. And then you just put it in here. And then you want to tighten this guy down to whatever's on the cover. 25 Newton meters. I don't have anything that goes down that low, so just kind of uh, tight. There we go. All right, so now we have the oil filter done. Let's uh, hop underneath and put that oil plug back so we don't forget that. And. I always like to uh, undo this and I like to put it right here so that I cannot close the hood before I have filled oil in there. It's just kind of a, a safety that I've been doing for a few years. I've never driven a car out without putting oil in it, but uh, I think that's just a, a, a good safe tip. Just put that so that the hood can't close properly. That way you know you won't drive away, especially if you're doing these like a lot of them. Uh, maybe you're working at a service station or something like that. Put the cap right there, you won't forget it. All right, so let's get our brand new oil plug. It's still dripping a little bit. And then you wanna tighten this up to whatever's on the screen right now and wipe it off so that it's nice and clean and you can see if it starts leaking. All right, and while we're under here, there are a few things that I like to look at. First of all, I'm trying to spot some like leakages anything's leaking and there are something there is something leaking on this car we have a fault with the EGR cooler so that's why uh, we have a little bit of oil here and there there actually used to be a whole lot more oil here but I've, I've cleaned it up in order to find that problem take a look at this belt for example this belt is no good it's full of cracks needs replacing you can tug a little bit on it feel that tensioner 
And there's actually, the tensioner doesn't feel very good. It's making a little bit of noise. So I would probably go ahead and order a tensioner and a new belt. Just look at pressure pipes. So we don't have any leakage around here. Look at drive shafts. Look at these boots. Make sure they're not, you know, leaking grease or anything like that. And obviously you can check the wheels now. You can check all the, you can check all of the joints. Just do an overall look, you know, look at bushings, make sure that they're good. Just do an overall look, you know, don't, don't just change the oil and don't look at anything else. You wanna try to spot issues. For example, I just grabbed that pipe and I can see that there's a bolt missing right there. So, I mean, that's, that's something. I'm not gonna put the cover back on, but this would be a great time to do that. But since I'm working on, well, waiting on that EGR cooler, there's just no point for me to put this back just yet. Okay, so let's fill up the oil. I uh, just checked it out on the computer. It's 4.3 liters. That is also available on audiomagazine.sc on their website. You can see instantly what the volume is, the service volume uh, for the oil. But on this model, it's 4.3. We're gonna go ahead and put 4.3 in there. It's gonna lift the dipstick and wipe that off first. Volkswagen has made this really awkward because you can't put a funnel in there because you know it'll just fall down which is really annoying so I'm gonna have to hold the can and the funnel now someone's gonna comment oh you can't pour you shouldn't pour it like that you should pour it the other way well these cans have one of those air things like air comes in at the top here so yeah normally if you don't have that you pour it like that but that's just gonna make a mess if you do it with one of these. All right, so we've got four liters in there and we needed 4.3. I like to put the funnel in the bottle. No spillage. You get the deal, right? 750, 500, 250. We need 300. Okay, so we are here in the under the glove compartment. Pull that down. Look right here. There's a little tab. I'll go ahead and slide that right. Pull it down. Come on. Not very smooth. All right. So you pull it out in front and you just slide it backwards. And it kind of pops out. But it must be some kind of extra. I have not seen that before. You can actually unplug this from here. Get that out of the way. Now you can pull down the, uh, the filter. I should be wearing my gloves. But that is really nasty. All right, so there's the old one, and here is the new one. Look at that. This is that high-tech filter I was talking about. I've actually done a little bit of research, and it turns out it's actually four layers of filtration in this thing. So it'll filter out any type of allergen, like from cats, dogs, to trees, pollen, all of that, and also smog prevention. Like if you live in a very smoggy city, this will filter out exhaust gases and, well, maybe not exhaust gases, but the smell of exhaust. It's gonna be really nice to see if it does any difference. Let's put it in there and see what happens. All right, so we're getting ready to do the last part of this service, and that is gonna involve the fuel filter. This filter probably doesn't need changing. I mean, you can tell by these screws right here. They're not stainless. I don't think they are anyway. Um, and they're not rusty or anything. So I don't think that this filter has been here for too long. 
but we're gonna swap this out anyway because we have a new filter and I kind of want to show it while making a video. Let's start unscrewing these screws. I don't know what that can be. T20 maybe. I actually invested in one of these things not long ago, but I never use it. Th these are stainless, by the way, so that's pretty good. Always keep it clean when it comes to fuel systems. So you don't want a bunch of dirt around here. I just engine cleaned this entire car not long ago, so I know it's not full of dirt. All right, so there's a tiny slot right here where you can insert a screwdriver and twist it a little bit and it should pop off. All right, so let's see how we're gonna do this. Oop. That's not supposed to happen. Let me just double check that I got the right filter. I'm not so sure anymore. Oh boy. I think we got the wrong filter, guys. Now I, I did a classic mistake because we had three choices of the filters and you know I just took a look at this can right here and it looked it's a pretty tall can I'm like it's got to be the longest filter you have so I just clicked in the longest filter and that was uh, that was not right so that was not correct my bad all right so that's the filter that we want 136 78 all right so in order to save some time i went ahead and bought a oem filter because we have an oem at volkswagen shop right here in town can you guess the price of this filter about 70 dollars for one of these fuel filters which is why you should be shopping at oli magazine instead and there will be a link in the description to discount it uh, code as well so you can save even more money on your exchange uh, it, it, that's just crazy like 70 bucks for a, a paper filter yep make sure you check all the numbers before you buy something all right so where were we we had taken the filter out yes and there's some uh, dirty water or dirty water dirty fuel in the bottom here and we're gonna go ahead and suck that out I'm gonna do it using compressed air and like a suction pump thingy. Uh, but if you don't have one of those, you can just go ahead and use one of these garden things. Stick it in here. And then you can just go ahead and pump the stuff out. Takes a while, but it works. Okay, that's the point. And if you got nothing else, this will work just fine. But we're not gonna be doing that today because I've acquired better things, but that's, that's a way you can solve it. Because I would recommend getting getting rid of that. It's completely black and dirty. So you wanna suck that out, get rid of that. And then we're gonna pour some fresh fuel in there. That's actually not how you're supposed to do it, but on diesels, it's always nice to fill up the filter before you start it. Um, just because you, you can, you, you don't wanna get too much air into the injectors and you know start the whole bleeding process. It just becomes a hassle. And it's often why fuel filters are left out of the service because you know they, they can be troublesome uh, on some models. But if you pre-fill them, especially on a model like this, it's very easy to pre-fill them. So I would recommend doing that. But Volkswagen, I don't think would recommend doing that because you can, you know, it, it, it's easy to get some dirty particles in there. Make sure you get it really, really clean like that. You don't want anything, no debris, no nothing at the bottom. It's nice and clean. All right, so next we're gonna get rid of this O-ring. Move that. And then you just wanna make sure that everything here is clean as well. And that there's no dirt. We're gonna go ahead and get the new O-ring. dab of oil on. First of all, I'm gonna start off by pouring in some diesel in here. Make sure 
sure we get that. Well, not filled all the way, but almost. I kind of like to rinse out the funnel first so that I don't get any particles. Just like that. Something like that. And I would have a look down there again to see that there's no debris and it looks good. Like I said, this is a bit unorthodox way of doing it. But. And then we gently put this back. Allowing the paper and the filter to kind of suck up the diesel. Okay, it's gonna spill a little bit, but it's fine. There we go. I wanna make sure you pull these down evenly. Don't just go all in on one. Go a little bit on each. Just go around. Let's check on the oil level. It's always hard to tell with these dipsticks, but it's actually right there at the maximum mark. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. We did a service on this caddy. Um, what will the future be for this car? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll use it myself. Maybe I'll sell it. Uh, the plan is to sell it, though. The plan is to sell it and make a profit, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, until next time, how do you get? Hi.